Should you dump your man if he's a fan of Andrew Tate? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, we're going to answer that very answer answer. We're going to answer that very specific question. Um, to be honest with you, I'm a little nervous because I feel like when I make this video, all the Andrew Tate fans are going to come and like kill my comment section. But I just want to say like this is for the girlies, the gays, the theys. This is for people who genuinely are concerned that dating a man who's a fan of Andrew Tate could be a, a red flag. And I want to have this conversation because there are people in my life that I love who are Andrew Tate fans. There are people that I know that are Andrew Tate fans. And frankly, I am also concerned for a multitude of reasons. Now, in the past, I've covered Andrew Tate. And you guys know that my response to him was very casual in the past. I was like, eh, what are you going to do? He's just some schmuck on the internet. But of course... I always underestimate how stupid people are. I always have this really large faith and hope in humanity that y'all will see through the bullshit, but people don't. And so once again, I am here to just remind people, don't date people who cheat, okay? Don't date people who are indisciplined and don't date people who are cruel. And I think there's something to be said about the cruel nature of Andrew Tate that I think stems from insecurity. And also, okay, don't date anyone who's insecure. And I don't mean casual insecurities. I mean deep-rooted insecurity, which will then leak onto you and cause major destruction, right? So when I look at Andrew Tate and I see the people that are fans of Andrew Tate and I see the relationships people are having with his content, I notice that there are two specific groups of men who watch Andrew Tate, casual watchers and hardcore cult followers. So if you're a casual watcher of Andrew Tate, maybe you're a guy who's struggling, you're insecure, you notice that a few things that he said actually ring true to you, you might find yourself flocking to his content just for the reassurance that you're valid. I think that's reasonable. I think some of the things that Andrew Tate says can be funny, uh, insightful, and true in certain bubbles, right? But ultimately, if you dig deeper into Andrew Tate and you find yourself being a hardcore fan, a person who literally knows his whole history as a person, a person that is considering going into the war room, a person who is considering becoming sort of a disciple of Andrew Tate, then you know at this point that he has a history of being a liar. Now, of course, when you are grifting in the way that he does or slash lying in the way that he does and or seeking fame in the way that he is, you might think, well, that's part of the MO, which I agree with you. I think if you're in that bubble, then it is your job to lie to your audience. It is your job to lie and twist media. It is your job to stay on top no matter what. And I think Andrew Tate plays the game really, really well. But again, as a fan of Andrew Tate or as a person who has a partner who is a fan of Andrew Tate, you really have to ask yourself, am I the kind of person that's an individual thinker or am I interested in following someone's philosophy? Meaning, am I going to become a disciple? Am I going to become a sheep? And that's the irony of the situation. Here's Andrew Tate who's saying that he's breaking the matrix. The matrix is out to get him when he himself is a version of the matrix. He's literally lying to you. You know, he's spinning narratives. He's going on Tucker Carlson and literally lying to millions of people so he can come out as this guy who is different than the version he's been his whole life. Now, look, people change and things happen. But obviously, if you're in this bubble where this is your reality and this is what you're spewing, you're open to lying. You're open to cheating. You're open to all the illegal things that he himself has sort of said in his videos. If you look at his bubble and the reality like his fans live in, he's kind of like the man. But that's the question you have to ask yourself. Am I the kind of person that wants to live this way? Because you don't have to. That's what I'm here to tell you guys. Like as a person who's more individualistic, especially as she ages, you don't have to do this. You don't have to think this is how the world works because it doesn't fully. You don't have to be in this bubble. You don't have to interact with these kinds of people. Man, woman, you don't have to be this person, right? When I was like 15, I was obsessed with Mario Puzo's work, okay? I'm a big Godfather fan, but in particular, Mario Puzo's novels in general, I'm a big fan. When I was 15, I went to summer school one year because that was a whole story. I'd never done that before. That was weird. But I got the chance to read The Godfather, and I was stoked, okay? We had to bring a book to class to read. And I felt connected to that narrative of having a clan, having people that would ride or die for me, having people that would break the law for me. I fell in love and romanticized being a criminal because I thought, yeah, fuck this system. Fuck the man, right? 
Of course, that transferred over after I grew out of it into like feminist groups. After I was a conservative and a Republican, I learned that a lot of people were grifting in the talk radio scene. I became like a feminist and a liberal woman. And I was marching with females and I was trying to like become a boss lady. And I was once again a part of a different version of the matrix to use Andrew Tate's language, right? I was falling into the trap of thinking that my individual could live in a collective. Andrew Tate isn't pro-individual. He wants you to toe the line. He wants you to think like him, to act like him, or you get kicked out. Even in the Vice documentary, whether you think it's biased or not, Andrew Tate himself says, like, you can get out of here if you don't like the way that it is, right? Which is fair. We all have standards. But his standard is specific and only benefits men. It benefits women by proxy. It benefits the women who are willing to adhere and worship the men but that's a very specific way to live you don't have to live that way um like the world is so free depending on where you live of course asterisk but you have choices in your life you can live all kinds of ways andrew tate and people like andrew tate love to spin the narrative that this is just how the world is this is how andrew tate's world is so if you're a girly or a gay and you have a partner who's a fan of Andrew Tate, you first have to figure out which kind of a fan, casual or deep in it, casual or cult member. This is very specific. Now, even in my own life, it's so funny because the same people in my life that are fans of Andrew Tate will say things that make me go, oh, and this is why I would tell women not to date you. I'll give you a really good example of the narr like the narrative that Andrew Tate spews that's just anti-women. So again, He's pro-women in the same way that, um, how do I say this? In the same way like Republicans are pro the poor, he'll use them to make money and talk about how much they love the poor, but they're constantly demeaning and undermining their, their power, right? That's how Andrew Tate's ilk talk about women, right? They'll talk about protecting them, but undermine them at all, at all moments or opportunities. So there's someone in my life who like loves Andrew Tate, okay? And... One day he was arguing with me and he says, you've never suffered a day in your life. Like you've never had one bad thing happen to you. He's talking about how I'm lazy and how I'm not like being a hard worker basically. And I'm sitting here thinking like, I don't live at home. I've managed my own bills. I'm the breadwinner in my family. I've been assaulted. And he knows this. I've been, I've been diagnosed with PTSD. He knows this. But in his mind... He felt strong enough to say, you've never suffered. Because men in Andrew Tate's bubble don't think your rape is suffering. They don't think you having a job and making money is you working hard. Because that's not what they qualify as good enough. Right? So when you're having this conversation with your partners and they say, I'm a fan of Andrew Tate, are they saying that they're not going to see your suffering as equal to theirs? Even though when they talk about men's suffering, they talk about how men have to be the breadwinners and men have to get jobs and men are suffering under violence from other men. And that's the thing is ultimately Andrew Tate's content is male focused, but a very specific kind of man. In the same way that they're upset that feminists have female centric or focused work, they themselves are the opposite side of that. That's why Fresh and Fit and all these people, I call them opposite feminists. Because I'm not a feminist anymore because I didn't want to toe the line of the group think, right? Because I'm too individualistic. But that's the requirement is that they make it about them and their hurt and they neglect everyone else. And in my worldview, I think gender is least important and consciousness is more important. So, of course, I want to help everybody regardless of gender. But Andrew Tate wants to help men and feminists want to help women. And that's great. But it just leaves out too many people, right, for me. So I just, I'm not interested. Now, in contrast to Andrew Tate's bubble, I want to look at the show Physical 100 because I watched it with my partner recently. Something really stood out to me. Now, this is a very specific bubble. It's a specific show about the best of the best athletes, right? We're talking about bodybuilders, strong men, uh, Olympians, all these amazing people who came to compete for the strongest, and it was a really great show. I really recommend it. It's on Netflix. It's so fun to watch. But something that stood out to me was how realistic they were without the amount of misogyny and toxic masculinity that Americans or people like Andrew Tate tend to have. Andrew Tate is really violent in his language. 
He thinks any kind of show of emotion or humility is like pussy, right? But the thing is, is humility is the key to wisdom. And if you're interested in wisdom, you have to have humility. Your arrogance and ego might get you a Bugatti, but it's not going to get you wisdom, right? So in Physical 100, I saw a lot of wisdom in the show. I saw a lot of humility in the show. The way they treated the female contestants was equal to how they treated the men. Very respectful, very eager to hear their stories, very impressed with how they were. But they were realistic all the same. You'll hear Pearly things and Andrew Tate say things like, feminists aren't realistic. They want equality, but they won't work the oil rigs or get drafted by the military. Equality of dignity has nothing to do with who's on the oil rig. When we're talking about equality, we're talking about dignity. Dignity. If Andrew Tate is saying, my woman is mine and she belongs to me, and he talks about her in a way that she's below, that's not what feminists want. They want equality of dignity. Now, feminists have a lot of issues, and don't get me wrong, they could fix a lot in the way that they talk about men and men's problems. But again, when you make it about gender, you really ruin the chance to help the consciousness. So that's my opinion. I think both sides are really fucking it up. Okay. In Physical 100, there is a particular um, moment in the show where this guy basically says, like, I'm going to choose to fight against a female partner because I know I'll win. She tries her hardest, but there's just no way she's going to win. And in some ways, it's just realistic. The number one winner of the show is not going to be a female. But they still respected the women for trying, and some of the women got pretty damn close. But ultimately, we know that compared to a man and a woman who both body build, there's just going to be different expectations of the result. And that's not bad because the equality of dignity existed there. The equality of dignity existed in the show. So it didn't matter if a woman was never going to win. They gave her the same opportunity. And that's the point, is that there's something respectful about it. In the show, there's a, a couple, a man and a woman, they're both uh, bodybuilders. They're both amazing. And same thing. They both cheered each other on. He constantly talked about what a badass she is. She's amazing. I love my wife. She talked about how amazing he is. She cheered him on. There was just so much support and love. So much equality of dignity that I do not see in Andrew Tate's bubble. So once again, when you ask yourself, oh my gosh, what do I do? My boyfriend or my man is a fan of Andrew Tate. Find out which kind. Why is he a fan of Andrew Tate? Is he just casually a fan? Well, in that case, he might want to reconsider saying it out loud, okay? Or because there are better men, by the way, who say the same good things that Andrew Tate says, the good things that Andrew Tate says, there are other men who say it better and actually like follow the, the um, values more. You know what I mean? They're more disciplined. Or is he like a sheep? Is he like a cult member? You know what I'm saying? Again, you only have one life and then you die. And Andrew Tate will tell you, like, this is how the whole world is, but it's not. I don't live that life. I don't live in that world, right? I don't live that life. And I have a partner. I have a place. I have a job. I have a good life. I'm really proud of my life. And it came from rejecting all the different places that were telling me, you have to do it this way. This is the only way you can. There's not one way to do it. I did not work this hard to be told I am limited. I don't want to be limited. And Andrew Tate's bubble is all about limitation. They say it's about growth. They say it's about discipline. But is it if you could only do it one way? Is it if the result has to look the same universally? Are you really catering to the individual if everyone in the end has girls, cars, and a suit? Are you sure about that? Isn't it ironic that Jordan Peterson <laughs> has even come out to be anti-Andrew Tate? Don't you think that's a red flag? Don't you, can't you see that there are different kinds of men who can spout the same things? There are different kinds of feminists that can spout the same things. There are different kinds of people all over the world and you're just falling for the shtick so hard and you don't have to, you don't have to. Can Andrew Tate be in your life and you still don't date him? Yes, just because he's a good person doesn't mean he's a good boyfriend or good husband right? But in Andrew Tate's case, I think it's all around probably not good. He often says in his videos, like, the Matrix wants to stop me because I'm nice to women. You might be nice, but you're not kind. And I value kindness. I value kindness over anything else because kindness comes from wisdom. Kindness comes from humility. 
Andrew Tate is nice to people. Do you know what niceness is? It's an exchange. I'll be nice to you. If you're if you follow my rules, I'll be nice to you. If you do what I say, I won't hit. See how I'm not hitting you because I'm so nice to you because you're doing what I'm saying? Kindness would be kind for kindness sake because of values. But niceness is an exchange. I'm willing to be nice to you as long as you're nice to me. I'm willing to be kind to you even when you're not kind to me. Because this is about values. I want better for Andrew Tate, but I don't think he's up to the challenge. I want better for you. When you're dating your boys, okay, and dating these men, I want better for them as well. I want better for all of you. So I sometimes get messages from people saying, oh my God, Brittany, I think my boyfriend's a fan of Andrew Tate. What do I do? Have a conversation with him. Make sure that he's not harboring negative energy that will spill over into the relationship in regards to the fact that you were born a woman. And make sure men who are dating women, that these women aren't harboring negative energy that will spill over into the relationship because you're a man. If you want better for the world, you have to be that better. And frankly, Andrew Tate is reacting to women. He's reacting to the status quo. He is not giving you an option out. He's just giving you a different matrix to live in. So again, my ultimate advice when having relationships with people who are fans of people that you're, <laughs> okay, is to make sure they know why they're even fans in the first place. And then have the conversation about lifestyle. What kind of a lifestyle do we want to live? Do you want a wholesome suburb lifestyle, right? Well, then what does this have to do with Bugattis and Andrew Tate? How does Andrew Tate live that lifestyle? Look at the life that Andrew Tate is living and ask yourself, is that what we want? Because that is a very specific life. It is not normal. It is not common. It is not typical. He even says himself, it's exceptional. Yeah, it's exceptionally Toxic, exceptionally destructive, exceptionally materialistic, exceptionally shallow. You know, one of the things I've loved too is all the Muslims who are like, yeah, Andrew Tate's Muslim. I'm like, let's see how it goes. Andrew Tate's Muslim. But like, let's see. Even they're hesitant to fully embrace Andrew because they know he's haram. They know he isn't following the values. What good is a represent like a representative of your religion if they're making your religion look more stupid? And he is. He is making Islam look so stupid, as is Sneeko, as is everyone else who's grifting their way into Islam. Okay? It's just sad. So again, could you imagine you're a woman, you're like successful, you have this boyfriend that you think is kind and amazing, he dates you knowing you who, he, like knowing who you are, and then all of a sudden goes, yeah, actually, wait, as a man, I'm going to give into my insecurity and say you can't be yourself because of my insecurity. Now, to some extent, in a real relationship, we sometimes do ask our partners to sacrifice because of our insecurities. But that shouldn't be the long-term goal. Like with Kiki Palmer and her relationship, he knew who she was. She's Kiki. And then all of a sudden, after they have a kid, what Andrew Tate podcast did this man listen to to all of a sudden turn the page on, on Kiki? What happens to these people who get stuck in these bubbles and then all of a sudden, do you ever hear these stories from men? My girlfriend was great and then she got a hold of some feminist podcast and all of a sudden she destroyed our relationship. Yeah, same thing. Now, often in, in life, we settle for our relationships and we're not actually choosing partners that are good for us or that are long-term ride or dies. We're choosing partnerships that are about niceness, about exchange without the love, the kindness, the humility. So again, are you in falling in love because you want to exchange a Bugatti and a purse and money and all this stuff? Are you falling in love because you want to have a wholesome, loving relationship? Do you want to be the couple on Up? Like Disney's Up? Do you want to be that couple? Or do you want to be Andrew Tate and his many quote-unquote wives who he barely sees and his children that he basically abandons? Do you want to be Elon Musk that just has random children with random people and he's like a baby-making machine but he's not a father? What kind of a relationship do you want? Because you don't have to have the one they're selling you. You can have the one you create with your partner. Okay, so at this point you might be asking, well, how do I even have that? Well, how do I do it? So recently I saw Fresh and Fit talk to Graham Stephan and his co-host. And one of the things that stood out to me was the comment section was just like, oh, Graham's such a beta. Graham is awful. Oh my gosh, Graham is such a pussy. You can tell Graham is whipped. Graham is a good person. He's got humility, he's wholesome, he's loving. He will never hit you. He will probably never cheat on you. He will never lie to you. But an Andrew Tate, 
will probably do all of those things considering the fact that he's on audio saying it. Considering the fact that Andrew Tate's ilk, Andrew Tate's bubble tends to equate abuse and BDSM. BDSM is not about abuse. It is about consent-based kink activity. So again, you can do BDSM in a toxic way in which you are not thinking about the consent of your partner or you can do BDSM in a consensual way where it's very clear what is fantasy and what is not fantasy. Andrew Tate likes to protect his abusive behavior by saying it's BDSM. BDSM is not abuse. Don't you come for a perfectly decent kink pastime and disguise it, you know, disguise your abuse under that pastime. That's bullshit. Andrew Tate does this and it upsets me because people fall for it. People on the internet, even good natured people will be like, well, Brittany, what if it's consensual? The story about the woman who was in bed with Andrew Tate and he says, I'm just thinking about whether or not I'm going to rape you right now. And she's afraid and she's saying, I don't like this. And he goes, I don't care if you don't like it. Either he's fulfilling a fantasy against her consent, which is horrible, or he's literally thinking about raping her. Do you get it? It's bad on both fronts. He fucked up twice broke her consent and was fulfilling a fantasy or worst case scenario, he was really going to try to grape her. So when you're having these conversations, remember, things might look away, but they could be something different. If you look at a priest who's spending all this time helping your child, oh, look how great this priest is. Man, he's really taking my kid places. Oh, I'm a single mom and my kid doesn't have a father. But look, this local priest, he's really been helping out. Is that priest diddling your children? Or is that priest genuinely a good person who's trying to help out? I don't know because it can look the same. You have to figure it out. It can look the same. And one can be very scary and one can be very okay. And Andrew Tate I think is very scary because you all take him so seriously and you were dumb enough to fall for his shtick. And that's what's scary. All these lonely, depressed, useless men and maybe some genuinely not useless men fell for this shtick that yeah, maybe women are the problem. Oh, isn't that the thing you've been raving and ranting against with feminism? That feminism just blames men? So why would you turn around and just blame women? You've lost the plot, my friends. You've lost it. So again, how do you have the relationship that is perfect for you? You stop thinking that you have to get the approval of society and you start thinking what's healthy, happy, and kind. What works for you and is still healthy What's unique to you and it's still healthy, meaning you're getting better, you're not depressed, you're not having constant fights, you're not feeling abused, you're feeling like there's communication happening. Happy, okay, so maybe you're not joyful because that's a different journey, but maybe you're happy. Yeah, life's kind of hard, but you're happy, okay? And then you're kind. You're not nice, which is an exchange. You're kind. There's kindness here, warmth here. You have to decide who you are. Again, With all of my work, this comes down to who you are. You start with yourself, you reflect with people, you come back to yourself. Okay? Be open but have boundaries. Recognize that this is about your joy and the kind of person you are. What kind of a woman dates Andrew Tate? What kind of a woman dates a sheep cult member of Andrew Tate? And then what kind of a woman happens to find out that her boyfriend is casually into Andrew Tate? These are different kinds of women different women these are not the same category of women they're all different so again who are you and then who are they and then see if they match you you don't have to be rude about it you don't have to be like "Ugh, I would never you should be like hey seems like we're different and this isn't what I want I don't want a relationship where my man all of a sudden tells me I can't dress cute on Instagram I don't want a relationship with a man that tells me I can't be a nudist. I don't want a relationship with a man where he tells me I can't do marijuana or have alcohol or go to a bar. Every lifestyle is different. One of the things that people always talk about in these bubbles, like the red pill bubble, is they'll talk about like women who go to bars are trashy. Can I tell you there are different kinds of women who go to different kinds of bars. There are women who are super trashy who go to bars. Then there are women who go to bars with the gays. There are women who go to bars with their girls and it's just like fun and casual. There are women who go to bars to be tempted. There are women, these are different kinds of people. Not all people who go to a bar are the same kind of people. And so when you stop, or no, actually when you start realizing that, I think you'll be better off because you'll realize, wait a second, 
Not everyone is the same. Look, I don't want to go to the bar. Okay. I am old and retired. Okay. I've spent my whole twenties at gay bars. I'm good. But I never went to straight bars, even in my twenties. I think one time we went to one straight club and it was really uncomfortable. I don't hang out with straight men in straight bubbles because they're extremely bad with boundaries and gay men aren't any better really. But at the same time, like, okay, it's a little bit better because they're not going to they're not trying to actually finish. They might start something. They might grab you. They might, you know, there's a violation of consent happening in some way to some extent, though we could talk about the fact that we're at the club in the first place. Maybe we shouldn't be there, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But ultimately, with the straight bubbles, there is a finish line for them because their ego requires it of them. Their insecurity tells them that if I don't bag a chick, I fail tonight. So there's something like inherently, you know, how do I say that? Like I can see the red pill perspective of like, why would you be going to the club when the men who are there are trying to close, you know? And so women need to think about what's a safe space for me to go to the club in which this isn't the end goal of the male participants in the club. That's really difficult because you might, it might not exist. And so you might have to make it up. So that can be very hard. So I'm not, you know, I'm trying to get you guys to understand like there is so many ways, there are so many ways to live a life but you first have to recognize what's already established and then recognize if it's something you have to create, which often you do, or something you can migrate towards. Does that make sense? And leave comments and questions in the sections down below because I would love to make more content on this. I am trying to get you to a finish line that is going to facilitate your joy. And that starts with knowing yourself and knowing what category you fall into, right? When I read books that are like very male-centric, like, oh, this is written for men, for male's ego. When you watch an anime, that is about a boy and the females are in it, but the females are all like badass assassins with big tits, but they're always there for the gratification of the man. You know how that's a male centric show? Fine. Same thing with girls. When you watch the girl reverse harem animes and you can tell like, oh, all the hot guys like this very ordinary girl, that's a woman centric show. But real life, healthy life, just I don't think operates that way. I don't think you want to live a life where all the men want you and all the women want you. That sounds exhausting. What you want is a life where the right man and the right woman or right woman <laughs> wants you. You want to live a life where the right person comes into your life so you can have a good life with them. Do you want to find your person, the person you've always wanted, and then still be berated by other people? No. If only we lived in a society where the marriage ring or some sort of sign of commitment was respected. But of course it's not. Even when you're married, people are like, so? Do you want to go out with me? Do you want to cheat with me? Do you want to do the world lacking in values? So you have to have your own and you have to stick to them. One of the reasons I don't care what you say and I mostly care what you do is because as a YouTuber who's known lots of YouTubers or has been on the internet a really long time or is just a person who's like been pretty social in her 20s and seen how many people talk a big talk but can't walk the walk, it is clear to me that people are weak. And it is clear to me that people, even myself, have been weak enough to fall for other people's weakness. We love a good shtick. We love a good brand. We love a good script. We love a good monologue. We love a good, fun, charismatic person validating all of our insecurities, validating all of our excuses to be weak, validating all of our reasons to settle, validating all the reasons to give ourselves gold stars when we haven't earned it. Humility and kindness is the greatest, greatest challenge. And it's the reason people don't play the game because it's too hard to win. So they play the game that's easy. Ego, money, trashing people, cheating, lying, scamming. That's the game most people are playing right? To some extent, on some spectrum, that seems to be the game people want to play because it's easy. It is easy to be a content creator that just shits on men and just shits on women. You'll get an audience. You'll get money. You'll get clout. They'll know who you are. They'll love the reinforcement. It is much harder to be someone who actually treats people like individuals, but it is possible. And I think it's necessary if you want to play the ultimate challenge game of humility and kindness. I struggle with it. You watch me struggle with it. But I'm still going to beat this eventually. Okay, that's the goal. 
because I do think kindness is the root of all goodness in the world. I think it's difficult sometimes, though, when you're faced with an Andrew Tate who tells you that your pain and suffering is meaningless because you're a woman, because you chose wrong, because you couldn't rely on a good man. What is a good man if he's cheating, lying, hurting me? What is a good man who, who violates my consent? What good is a man if he is weak because he wants to fulfill his own ego? What good is a man with no humility? I think he's worthless. To some extent, he could be helpful if you want money, if you want to be shallow and you want materialism, sure. Date Andrew Tate if you're shallow. But that shallow leads to a lot of pain. Something I've been seeing on the internet, which is a trend right now, is this joke of would you date a man who hit you if he paid you $100,000 a week? And then the joke is a woman shows up with like bruises all over her face and then she's counting her money. Ah, funny. <laughs> so funny. Sure. Funny. In an isolated space where it's not real. But you know people do that, right? People allow men to hit them and abuse them and cheat on them for a paycheck. And I have a feeling that's exactly the kind of man that Andrew Tate is or the kind of men that he associates with and the kind of women who associate with them. A person with no dignity and no values? Sure. Why not sell out for money? Why not let a man hit you and abuse you if you think that's all you're worthy of? And that's what happens, right? You're in a toxic relationship and you think, oh my God, is this all I'm worthy of? And then you wake up one day and hopefully realize maybe in this moment of time, but you don't have to be here forever, right? The red pill does this thing where it says like, Women never hold themselves accountable. Andrew Tate says women are accountable for their rapes. What does that mean? We're all accountable for our choices. But if you feel trapped and you feel like you don't have the tools to make better choices, I just want you to know you can get them. So yes, you're not accountable for your rape in the sense that you didn't rape yourself. But in the future, you can protect yourself better by not dating Andrew Tate's or people like him. Not dating people with mentalities where women are second class to them. Not being in unsafe environments where people don't have your best interests in mind. The reality is like the world might not have your best interest in mind. And that is the hard reality of our life. That's what I have to accept constantly. We're like, there is no village. The village only exists as long as you toe the line. The moment you are individualistic, the moment you have a thought for yourself, there is no village. But there's still a place for individuals to exist and to find joy. I do it all the time. That's my life. That is what I transformed to become, is an individual who recognizes what everyone's doing, and then I still play the game to find my individual joy. It's exhausting and frustrating, and it's hard not having a village. And the village could exist in small increments in certain ways. Like my parents are great and amazing, and they'll help me to an extent. They won't help me in everything because I don't fit the the rules of their village, but they'll help me a little bit because that's what we've negotiated. And that's great. I love their support. I appreciate it. Same with me. I don't agree with my brothers who love Andrew Tate, but I'll be there. I'll back them up, but I won't help them do everything that they plan to accomplish because it doesn't coincide with my values. So you can have small villages, but you maybe as a staunch individual might not have a 100% village. Does that make sense? You get to make the decision. What kind of an individual do you want to be? What kind of a community member do you want to be? And do you want to be in the village? I watched this Muslim guy who was a part of the the war room, allegedly. He showed receipts, but again, I can't, I don't know how to verify those. And if his story is true, he said the funny thing is, he's like when he went into the war room and he was meeting all the men in there, all of them were making money off the backs of women. All of them were getting rich off OnlyFans girls or doing some sort of things that for him as a devout Muslim was like haram. So he was like, I can't do this. And he likes Andrew Tate, he says, but he didn't understand why there wasn't a way to make money like more honestly or more with dignity, right? And it's because in these groups where there's courses being sold and scams being held and the, like, you know, the idea is that Andrew Tate is the epitome of Talk shit on a group and then do the thing. Talk shit on sex work and then be a sex worker. Andrew Tate is a literal sex worker. 
literally a sex worker. But he'll talk shit on sex work all the time. And now pretend he he's pretending he didn't even do it in the first place. So sure, keep following, you know, keep falling for Andrew Tate and his little shtick. But that's a choice. And it is a choice to continue dating men who are dumb enough to fall for it. Because it is a version of very dumb. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next podcast. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.